A deep freeze gripped much of the US and Canada in late January 2019. Something called polar vortex was blamed. Hello, I am Lakshman Maheshwari and today I am going to tell you about this polar vortex. But before we begin, let us have a look at the American side of Niagara Falls on January 9, 2014. The massive falls partially froze over during a polar vortex event. So what exactly is a polar vortex? It is an upper level, large scale, low pressure area lying near one of the Earth's poles. There are two polar vortices in the Earth's atmosphere overlaying the North and the South Pole. Polar vortex rotates counterclockwise at the North Pole and clockwise at the South Pole. So, both polar vortices rotate eastward around the poles. The rotation is driven by the Coriolis effect. Talking about the location, the bases of the two polar vortices are located in the middle and upper troposphere and extend into the stratosphere. Beneath that lies a large mass of cold, dense air. The interface between the cold dry air mass of the pole and the warm moist air mass further south defines the location of the polar front. The vortices weaken and strengthen from air to air. They strengthen in the winter and weaken in the summer. The exact strength depends on the temperature difference between the equator and the poles. When the vortex of the Arctic is strong, it is well defined, the Arctic air is well contained. But when the vortex is very weak, the flow of Arctic air becomes more disorganized and masses of cold Arctic air can push equatorwards. What happens next is called sudden stratospheric warming events. It brings cold dry air into contact with the warm, moist air of the mid-latitudes. It causes rapid and dramatic change of weather known as cold snap. Normally, when the vortex is strong and healthy, it keeps a current of air known as the jet stream traveling around the globe in a pretty circular path. This current keeps the cold air up north and the warm air down south. Now let us examine some myths about polar vortices. First of all, let me tell you, this is not something new. However, it has only recently been popularized, bringing attention to a weather feature that has always been present. Also, we must note that it is not a feature that exists at the Earth's surface. Weather forecasters examine the polar vortex by looking at conditions tens of thousands of feet up in the atmosphere. And lastly, it is not confined to the US. Portions of Europe and Asia also experience cold surges connected to the polar vortex. Polar vortex was first described as early as in 1853. However, it was mentioned more frequently in the news and weather media in the cold North American winters of 2013-14. There were notable outbreaks of polar vortices in 1977, 1982, in 85 and in 89. More recently, a deep freeze that gripped much of the US and Canada in late January 2019 has been blamed on a polar vortex. Parts of US had wind chills just above minus 45 degrees Celsius. That is colder than the frozen tundra and Antarctica. Polar vortices have been linked to climate change. A study in 2001 found that stratospheric circulation can have anomalous effects on weather regimes. Researchers found a statistical correlation between weak polar vortex and outbreak of severe cold in the Northern Hemisphere. The general assumption is that reduced snow cover and sea ice reflect less sunlight and therefore evaporation and transpiration increases, which in turn alters the pressure 
and temperature gradient of the polar vortex causing it to weaken or collapse. One of the most threatening side effects of polar vortices is ozone depletion. Nitric acid in polar stratospheric clouds react with chlorofluorocarbons to form chlorine. This chlorine catalyzes the photochemical destruction of ozone. Chlorine concentrations build up during the polar winter but ozone destruction is greatest when the sunlight returns in spring. Since there is greater air exchange between the Arctic and the mid latitudes, depletion at the North Pole is much less severe than at the South. At Arctic, it is usually an ozone dent, whereas the more severe ozone depletion over the Antarctic is considered an ozone hole. However, even at the Arctic, the situation is bad. You can see the comparative data between 1979 and 2008. The total ozone has decreased beyond half. Interestingly, polar vortices are not restricted to Earth only. Other astronomical bodies are also known to have polar vortices. Venus has double vortex, which means that it has two polar vortices at a pole. Other planets are Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and Saturn's moon Titan. But what is more interesting is the fact that Saturn's south pole is the only known hot polar vortex in the solar system. This video was about polar vortex and was brought to you by Lakshman Maheshwari. Please like, subscribe and share. Enjoy your day.